كل الناس دايما بتتوقع الخير لرامي كل الناس بتفكر رامي هيعمل الخطوه الجايه ايه اللي رامي هيقدمه ايه اللي هيعمله المره دي رامي قدم مدرب من المدربين اللي لهم تاريخ جامد جدا للعرب هو مدرب للاجانب بس رامي دلوقتي هيقدم التاريخ ده للعرب عن طريق التحضيره اللي رامي حضرها السنه دي مع تشاد نيكلز فاحنا هنتكلم مع تشاد نيكلز هو يو سير جود ام جود ايفريثينج از فاين ام فيلين كونفيدنت فيلين جود يو سولد ذات ات ويل جونا كونتينيو ان عربي ويز يو ام واتس ذات يو يو سولد ذات اي ويل كونتينيو سبيكينج ويز يو ان عربي نو اي وي وونت جيت اني ثينج انسر اي مين اي كان انسر يو بت نو تيل ان وات وي جونا جيت رايت Uh, one of our team, he said that, yeah, Allah, you can say Yeah, that. yeah, Allah. Allah. <laughs> give us one, give us one. Allah. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> That's how I say it, everything's good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Chad, what makes you work with Rami? I'll tell you, I mean, I, I, I'm a bodybuilding fan at the end of the day. And when you're a bodybuilding fan, you're driven to somebody like that. And I always saw him um, as just this freak of nature. Yeah. But, again, I'm a bodybuilding fan. So I kept seeing him come on stage, and it wasn't what I wanted to see. And I always had a vision of what I thought he should look like, just like every, all the other fans have. Yeah. Um, and then, a, a rig, you know, originally we have a friend that kind of brought us together, yeah. Victor Martinez. Right. Victor and Martinez, uh, yes. so we started talking, and we could tell right off the bat it was just going to work out very well. You know? and, uh, so you saw Rami in the previous years, like you see Ronnie Coleman's in the previous exactly. years. What did you add? to Rami like you added already to uh, Ronnie Coleman? Well, Ronnie was a little bit different because Ron, Ronnie wasn't quite to the level he needed to be at. So we knew we had some work to do, but everything was there. Like when I looked at Ronnie Coleman, I looked at like a blank page that I knew that in a couple years with his work ethic and his genetics, we were going to see something that nobody had ever seen before. And that's what we ended up with. With Rami, he was already big. I saw something in Rami, but it was all the pieces weren't there. Yeah. So we were missing this piece and this piece, you know what I mean? And you could tell like some coaches would do one thing, but there's still five pieces of the puzzle missing. Yeah. Um, and that was the thing that was so irritating. And I just watched year after year after year. And finally I was like, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. But when he, when he already started to prep with you and we went to one competition. Arnold, yes. Yeah, and there was the, like the, Yep. Puzzle, the puzzle piece was missing exactly. there too. Exactly. And so we went into that with obviously questions needed to be yeah. answered, right? And so I, you know, it's weird because I've trained a tremendous amount of big people Gunther Schlierkamp, Paul Dillette, Ronnie Coleman, Nasser El Sambadi, all 300 pound bodybuilders. And they all had one thing in common they could take in a tremendous amount of food, like a tremendous amount of food. So I knew that Rami was going to be carb sensitive. But I didn't have any idea how carb sensitive it was, and I didn't have any idea how efficient his body was. And he's probably the most efficient human being I've ever met in my life. Um, and so we went in, and we were is in. It, is it like weakness or no? It's something a, it's, good? it's a God-given strength. Yeah. But if you don't understand it, yeah. it, bec it becomes a downfall right off the bat because you have to be able to understand how to use that to your advantage because. You now have to do less, which is great, okay? Um, the body becomes more stable, which is great. But the problem is if you mess any piece of that up, again, it becomes stable. It takes a lot longer to fix. Yeah. And even with a 200-pound guy, if you have a bodybuilder like that that's 200 pounds, it takes a lot longer to fix. But when you're dealing with a 300-pound guy, it now takes a week to fix. Yeah. Um, and that's, be that's where the problem became. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> I'm, <not talking. laughs> I'm really sorry about that. So let's go back and continue. So you find the the muscle, uh, the sorry. You find the the puzzle piece that it was missing already. I think uh, we found a bunch of puzzle pieces that we we figured out. So basically, we used the Arnold, um, and and really the prep went really well for the Arnold. But then when we got there, the last two to three days. Yeah things just fell to pieces. Yeah. And so again, we just couldn't fix those pieces in time. Um, but coming out of that show, I knew that basically I had everything I needed. Yeah. Um, and we were really looking forward to, you know, hopefully being able to go to Australia. But then, of course, he gets basically he stuck, you know, down, then locked down that, in yeah. Dubai. And yeah. then, you know, we ended up just having trouble after trouble after trouble. Yeah. Then he ends up with COVID. So we end up then, luckily, we end up with a situation that, we, you know, with the invite and Finally, this year, 
being able to show exactly what we wanted to show. Yeah. 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 So this year, Rami is on the stage. 100% all the package will gonna be? It, he's gonna be 100% the best he's ever been. That's a guarantee. Um, you know, we don't know what 100% is because I think his ability is just enormous. So I think we are gonna see a phenomenal look this year I'm at the Olympia. I think it will be worthy of, you know, winning. But the question is, how much more does he have? You know what I'm saying? And the more that we start to fine tune things, yeah the more that he will improve. Um, and it's the same as Ronnie. You know, we nailed, you know, his first Olympia. Between, the second Olympia became better. Actually, actually between the, what's like, if I, if I want to introduce Chad Nicholson, I will, I will like introduce you in one thing. Watch Rami from 2002 and 2003. That move, exactly. it's a Chad. It's, it's, it's unbelievable being able to watch that. You know, sometimes I look at that, and it's hard to believe that I was even part of that because yeah. when you look at him, he doesn't look human-like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's it's kind of just you know shocking yes. how how crazy yeah. it is. Um, but to be part of that and to see that and to see Ronnie and, and Ronnie was a different human being. Um, the way he trained, his mindset. You know, I told everybody, you know, when they went up against Ronnie, you realize you have to beat him in every aspect. Yeah. You have to outthink him. You have to outtrain him. You have to outdiet him. You, you have to outwork him at everything. It's just impossible. And then on top of that, you have to have similar genetics to even be able to compete with him. Yeah. Um, Rami is a very similar person because he is very driven. And I can promise you, once he gets his hands on the Sandow, he will be that much more driven. Rami, as a human being, you have been like talking to him. You read his brain, you read his thoughts, you his uh, like feelings, everything about him. Yeah. If you describe Rami as a human being, not, not as a bodybuilder, yeah. can you have some words for that? I'll tell you, Rami is probably one of the most genuine human beings I've ever met in my life. Um, passionate at everything he does, um, but just a very genuine person. If he, when he tells you he likes you, he likes you, okay? He is that type of person, like he is thrilled to be a part of this. He's thrilled to see this. Like it was very similar. Ronnie was a little bit different. Ronnie felt like he was put on this planet to be Mr. Olympia. Yes. Um, Rami is very similar because he has the passion. Um, and again, it's a little bit different than Ronnie, but he has the passion that is driving him to be Mr. Olympia. Yeah. yeah. So. Because in the previous years, this, this question will gonna be a little, little bit like tricky. In previous years, every time when Rami didn't make it, so the, the coaches or the trainers for him that like, they take, it, they take their hands off, they say that, oh, it's Rami's mistake, it's Rami's not listening to our plans, Rami, 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 you know, these chihuahuas when yeah, they talk. Yeah, yeah. So could you please tell me from your own opinion, you have been prepared Rami for two times now, two competitions in a row, so, this Rami is like stubborn, he don't listen to you, he's like using his brain and not com like uh, following your strict diet or something like that? I'm gonna tell you the problem is he follows everything yeah. to a T. That's the problem. So if you have a coach who literally doesn't really know what they're doing, yeah. then you, you have nobody else to, to you know basically blame except yourself yeah. because he is literally going to do everything to a T. And I can tell you, like, getting ready for this show. So we, we done, you know, the Arnold. And like I, like I said, we got a lot of questions answered at the Arnold. Well, coming in here, I said, listen, we are going to go very old school. We are going to go to a diet that is going to be probably the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. There is going to be a point when you feel like you're dying. Like you can't think. You can't. Man. You can't I, understand. I will tell you one thing. I, you know that me and Rami, we, we go together so much, like, I, I live in his home there. I saw him, you write for him 50 grams of rice per meal. He was picking the last rice yes, with yes. his finger, like, I told him, like, this is will make the difference. Yes. He told me that my coach said that. Yes, that's that's exactly it, 100%. And, you know, I, I'm like, he, want, he will write me and be like, listen, what about this? And I'm like, yeah, this is fine. He goes, no, you tell me because I want to make sure I do everything to a T. And, and that's, that's the way he was from the get-go. That was the way it was for the Arnold. That's the way it was from here. That's why I said, you know, at the Arnold, I said, look, I take 100% responsibility for the Arnold because I carved him up. 
I did it exactly, you know, the way I thought. That, and again, I wouldn't change anything I did because going in with a 300-pound athlete, my brain tells me he's going to need X amount of carbs, right? I even went in with a very moderate game plan, and it was still too much. Um, but again, we had to go through that to learn. And we had to, you know, for us to be able to display the package that we're going to tomorrow, we had to go through that at the Arnold. Um, I wish we would have had a, a smaller show to kind of like go, you know, because we were able to do that with Ronnie, actually. So most people don't know that, but we did a show in Col uh, California. Ronnie lost that show um, because we didn't give him enough carbs. And so he lost that show to Kevin Lavrone. We made the adjustments and he never lost again until Gunter Schlerkamp beat him though, at the GNC. Um, but again, you know, Rami is one of those guys, I don't care, you know, if, he t if you tell him to do something, that is 100% what he is going to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I can tell you that everybody that's saying, oh, he didn't work out hard, he, he didn't diet hard, he, like I've never seen, like he literally would have just starved himself to death if the coach would have told him to do that. Yeah. Like I'm telling you, that's, yeah. that's how, like, you know, he would do, so. The other question will gonna be, this is something I even posted on my Instagram today and even I tag you in it. When I saw the life between you and Dennis James and you stand next to Dennis James, I take a screenshot, I put it and I said that that's make me happy, you know, because two trainers, they are really famous, they have so much in this industry and they put all their efforts inside Rami. So that was really amazing. I was happy yeah. about that. Well, here's the thing. Both of us want to see him where he belongs, yeah. okay? And, you know, the, the, it was one of the things, like me and Dennis, I, I trained Dennis, you know, yeah, when he was yeah. getting ready for he stuff. Say, and that was one of the things, you know, that I felt so positive about. And again, like, we were going to go into a deep, deep diet. We were going to get to a point, like I said, where, you know, you were in, you know, like your brain was just shot and it was shut down. And there was one point when I called Dennis and I was like, we got to get Rami here now. We've got to get him to your house now because he's getting ready to go to a point. So this was your own idea? Well, it was actually Rami's idea originally. He's like, listen, what do you think about this? And I'm like, yeah, there's going to come a point when we have to do this. Yeah. Like, we absolutely have to do this. So you and didn't have an ego issue? No, like, I'm no, a coach. No. Don't go to the another coach no, and be with him. No. Maybe he will going to take the credit for himself no. or something like that. Here's the thing. Like, I knew that Dennis understood that, okay? And you have to go through it to understand it. So, like, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that could be like, listen, I understand what he's going to do. No. You don't understand what he's because you have to go through it. Dennis already went through it with yeah. me, right? So I told Dennis, I said, listen, Rami's getting ready to go into a very critical part of his diet. We got to get him to Arizona because you understand what that is. Yeah. And so then I called Rami and I go, listen, we got to get you to Arizona as fast as possible. Yeah. We got to get you there because I said the next two weeks is going to be hell. It's going to be hell. At some point, like, it's going to cross your mind, like, what am I doing? Like, you know, is this all worth it? I said, it is, but you've got to have a support team that can guide you through that. And I said, it either has to be me or Dennis. And I said, Dennis has already went through it. You can stay right there. The other thing was, Dennis, tra I like Dennis's training style, right? So he trains very heavy, but at the end does a lot of, like, just pushing, like, drop set stuff, like empty in the tank type of thing. And I told him, I'm like, listen, every time he walks out of the gym, Make sure you empty the tank on him. Make sure he has nothing so, left. So, so the rumors or whatever come to the social media when they, they say that it's overtraining, they right, are right, right, right. they are like panicking. panicking they don't know what they are doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. By the way, the guy who say panicking is my best friend. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah, him yeah, the yeah, most, yeah. Chris Azito. But yeah, I love Chris. Yeah, yeah, but but in your opinion, this was a plan. It was a hundred percent plan. And anybody that's ever watched Dennis's training style. Yeah. They know. So what they saw was one set. Yeah. Okay. Like if you looked at him on the T-bar row, okay, there was eight or nine plates on that T-bar. Yeah. He didn't start there. Yeah, okay. Sure. He pyramided up. So you've got five to six to seven working sets and then one enormous drop set just to empty the tank. And he did that with everything. That's what we needed because we needed, again, we needed enormous calorie burn in the gym. We needed to dig deep, deep into the muscle. We needed to take Rami mentally and physically someplace that he had never been before. That's what he did. And, and when, even when I told him, I said, listen, you're going to question a lot of this. Like, you're, eventually a point is going to hit you like, is this all worth it? I said, but when you get there, we're very close to the end of that part. And then we're going to transition over. You're going to feel 
better. We're going to start manipulating things, your energy. I said, we're still going to be able to, like, you know, you're going to be surprised how your body responds once we go through that because we're going to drastically change the diet. But I said, you're going to be very proud of going through that yeah. and presenting what you present. And that was just part of it. It was just part of it. So it was all planned. All planned. And like I said, like me and Dennis are very close. I can tell you right now, like I will. Well, actually, I tried to, I tried to. How are you, bro? How are you? I miss you so much. I miss you so much. Up, don't Dennis? go, don't go anywhere. I need to film with you. Don't go Still? anywhere. Yeah. Still with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I will, I will go with the point when everything is planned like that. You structure. I'm telling you, like the key is structure, but like Rami, we had a set game Rami, plan from the get-go. Rami boom, boom, boom. will come to the stage dry and have separations and crisp look. I can promise you right now. Listen, what I can't promise is where he's going to place, but I can promise you, because uh, obviously, because I, I mean that's going to be up to the judges. Yeah. But I'm very confident yeah. what I'm going to stick in front of the judges, yeah. Yeah. and I can promise you he's going to be bone dry. Yeah. He's going to have more separation everywhere. He will have detail that nobody has ever seen before. Um, that's a guarantee. Um, he's going to be lighter. He's going to be hard. He's going to be dry. Um, it's the physique that I saw and what I wanted to see. Um, and again, like at the Arnold, we were headed that direction, but I didn't see the physique I wanted to see. Um, it wasn't the physique I wanted to see. Um, this is the physique I want to see. Well, all of us, the Egyptian, the Middle East, everyone is hoping this year it's Rami's year. So and I want to say something for you that you have to always consider it in your head. Rami is our superhero for the Middle East. Yes. So you have to be ready. Oh, I know, I know. You just wait for what's coming. <laughs> it's funny. Like <laughs> if I've you had... have to be ready for what will happen if Rami didn't do it sure. this year. You were gonna face so much I agree. things. I agree. It was kind of interesting because with Ronnie, he, he had an enormous fan base, right? And there was always like, what, what you know, version of Ronnie? Because we came out and surprised everybody, right? Um, so it wasn't like, hey, we're expecting Ronnie to win the Olympia, right? Every, he just showed up, and everybody's like, holy shit, right? Okay, with Ronnie, we we have something that we are expecting, right? And I've had so many like, hey, listen. Uh, we need you to do this. Yeah. We we need this from you. We need you to do this. Yeah. Um, I've, it's I've a had, pressure. It, it's a it pressure. is. It is. <laughs> um, but it was good. Like I like that. Like yeah. I like that. I was, you know, sometimes like because I got kind of comfortable where I was at, and then all of a sudden, you know, with Rami, I was like, man, we got to do something. We got to do something, and we gotta, you know, we kind of changed the game a little bit with with Ronnie. Yeah. And now it's time to push push the boundaries a little bit with Rami. If you take the mic in your hand and look to the camera and give some words to the Middle East and specific the, the Egyptian guys. What you will say for them? I'll tell you, man, you guys, I, like, I obviously I wasn't huge there until I started working with Rami, but I'll tell you, like, the fan base that I've, in, you know, got from, from Egypt just from Rami shows me the passion of the sport in that area. It shows me the drive. It shows me why Rami does what he does. Um, that makes me a better nutritionist makes me want to push things even more so i appreciate everything and i promise you promise we're going to deliver what you guys have been looking for